Hey, it's Grace here on Books and Cooks, and I'm here to film a first clip for a new vlogging project. So excited to go into details on that for you today. Um, yeah, so it's June 16th, it's a Friday morning, and I found this article a couple weeks ago, actually. I'll link it down below. Um, it is an article from Book Riot that lists the 25 best horror books of 2023. And I was really excited to find this article because I've I've been trying to explore new release horror from the last couple years and I definitely trust a lot of Book Riot recommendations. So um, I think that this is a pretty strong list. It actually has my current favorite horror book that I've read so far this year, which is Lone Women by Victor Laval. My goal with this vlogging project is to read as many of these horror books from this list as I can over the next few weeks. There's a lot of them that are available at my library that I'm on hold for, so I'm excited to do that. And I intend to read as many as I can before I get maybe like disappointed or frustrated with the list. So I'm not going to force myself to read books that I'm not enjoying. But since I feel pretty confident about a lot of the recommendations on here, and um, obviously my favorite book of the year, and specifically favorite horror book so far of the year is on this list, I want to try a bunch of these out. The next book I'm going to pick up is also a highly anticipated horror book for me. And this is Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. And it's supposed to be kind of like funny and horrific following a young woman who ends up um, kind of leaving her planned career as a pianist and starting to work at a natural beauty company. Um, and she's basically the only woman of color at this company and things start to go kind of sideways when she starts working there. Um, in my past life, I also have worked at natural beauty <laughs> companies before. So I'm really interested in hearing some of the takedown and the commentary on this industry in particular. Um, and the way that people who work in the retail space, retail beauty space are treated, um, I think it should be pretty interesting. So I'm going to dive into that. I have it on my um, Kindle app for my library. So I'll dive into that and I will update you when I have an update. All right, so quick update on this book, Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. This is such a creepy horror book. I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, it is, how do I explain it? So basically it follows this main character who um, at the very beginning of the book, she gets recruited to come work at this. It's like a natural beauty retail store where they sell different items, but they also sell like spa treatments and things like that. So it's really weird. And they use a lot of like cutting edge animal technology. They're like inspired by different animals and animals and like insects and things are actually used in their product. Their whole thing is that they're, you know, supposed to be ethical, organic, um, and very high end kind of natural beauty store. And they're owned by this like creepy 30 under 30 venture capitalist bro. You learn more about him like through the the course of the story and he's really creepy and the people who work there are weird and they all are really obsessed with like beauty shit and they also are all obsessed with this idea of like perfecting themselves and wellness culture and so this main character gets recruited to work there and she starts becoming like enfolded in this cult environment but it's also like the first job that she's had where she was actually making like a little bit of money and she has some like extenuating circumstances where she needs that money to care for some people in her life um so yeah so that's kind of the the premise of this book and it just starts to like go off the rails and get creepier and creepier there's a lot of like body horror obviously you can imagine with like a natural beauty kind of store there's a lot of like 
weird things that they do to their bodies that are just part of like working in this, this environment and the things that you hear about the clients doing to themselves. It can be really creepy and there's like a lot of body horror with that. Um, there's definitely some like creepy insect and like animal shit going on too. So if those things creep you out, like that's really creepy. Um, I think the thing I'm enjoying most about this so far, like the thing that's creating such a good atmosphere and a, and like the thing that I um, would say sets it apart as a horror story is it's written in a very matter of fact way. So like the author is literally telling you like from this character's perspective, what is happening around them. And so she observes things in this like almost removed way where she just recounts exactly what happens and so sometimes that's very like usually in the story it's kind of like mundane right it's not an exciting way to tell a story and then you have a story being told in this mundane way but it's a completely ridiculous thing that this character is telling you like totally matter matter of factly in the story so that's where it, you get it's like builds this tension because this character is just like observing more and more ridiculous like wild creepy things that are happening and but they're still just like observing it right it's just like and then this happened and then this happened <laughs> very wacky um it builds that creepy tension because it's so mundane like it's told in such a mundane way but it just keeps getting like more and more ridiculous and I think that is really making it stick for me I'm about 60% in, so I am I think the next couple times, probably when I sit down with it, I will finish it because we're kind of reaching like a fever pitch spot in the story where a lot of stuff is going to go down, I think. Um, and it's a pretty short book. So if I sit down tonight, I think that I'll probably finish it. I just wanted to do a check-in for Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. Um, I finished it last night, just like I said in my last update, I finished it um, this basically the second time that I picked it up after I, I spoke with you. Um, all in one go, that last 40% because it was really like the high-pitched part of the horror story. And yeah, it was fantastic. It was such a well-written horror story. Um, it was very, very gross. Uh, there was a lot of, lots and lots of body horror, lots of, um, like sexual assault and abuse related horror. So lots of content warnings for people who do pick up the story. Um, and some, I don't want to like give things away, but there's just basically anything you could think of that might be triggering is probably probably present in the second half of this book at least. So uh, don't go into it lightly, I suppose. It left me with a, a deep sense of unease and um, just feeling disconcerted in general about the, the where the story left off, I guess. Um, but very, very, very strong horror book. Um, I think it would, at this point, it would definitely be in my top five horror books that I've read this year and I really think it's a, such a phenomenal debut. I'm waiting to see what other books come in next so I will update you when I get something. I do want to read you a little section from um, Natural Beauty because I felt like it's I could describe the basic premise I can kind of like give you an idea of some of the things the way that it's written technically that really worked for me I think I did that in my last update but there's nothing like reading it yourself to really um give you an idea of what this author is working with so I have a little um blurb that I wanted to read you from earlier on in the book the main character is talking about what it's like working in this beauty retail space and this paragraph really connected with me and my background working in that kind of area so I thought it was very very strong. The first thing they teach me at the store is how to be my best self. 
It requires constant self-surveillance to steadily improve. My coworkers relate it to pruning a bonsai, painful but necessary for refinement. What starts as an enthusiasm for improvement becomes an all-consuming infatuation. Caution becomes paranoia and eventually fear. Is there anything more comforting in life than knowing what to fear? At Holistic, they teach me what I need to be afraid of to become beautiful. Ouch. <laughs> that one really, that one really hit. Um, because no matter what companies say ethically their goal is, if you're operating within a society where being beautiful connotes power, especially for women, and um, beauty is defined by like external standards, basically always, especially in the capacity where you're you're actually like consuming products. Um, all that shit is bullshit, right? Like it doesn't, you could say all day long that it's, you know, it's ethical and they're all about your wellness and your own appreciation of your own beauty. But at the end of the day, there's actually a great part in this book um, that comes up where in the retail space kind of early on, um, someone makes the point that like, if you look gross, you can't sell beauty products. And I heard that all the time. <laughs> when I worked at the place where I worked. And this is with like other people that I worked with, right? Those people who were being paid the same amount as me, but there was always um, a level of disinterest in hiring people who didn't have good skin naturally, right? Cause you have to be able to sell what you're selling to people. And if you don't naturally have good skin, um, you can use all the products in the world, but if you, you know, there's other things that usually are going on, right? There are things hormonally potentially that are going on, there's stress. Um, so unless you're willing to like cover yourself in makeup to make your skin look like it's really good, you're not going to sell things. And I remember just so many times people saying to me specifically when I was selling um, the moisturizers and the things at the store that, wow, like your skin is so nice. Your skin is so clear. Um, how do I get skin like yours? And I just wanted to say, you know, I've literally basically never worn makeup my entire life. <laughs> that's, that's part of why I have okay skin right now is that I've never slapped on all the shit that they've been selling you your entire life to make you look beautiful. I haven't done that. So um, it's a little bit, a little bit weird, but again, it like, it leans into this idea of like natural beauty, right? Like even if you're selling these products that are supposed to make someone more beautiful or um, feel more beautiful or feel like their skin is more in line with what they, the expectation is of society, they hire people who naturally look that way already or are very competent at making themselves look that way with makeup. That is the that is the absolute truth. That's the truth in um, probably really any industry is that they're gonna hire someone who already has those skills and then sell their product based on your impressions of those people. So very lots to unpack there with you know my own experience working in that industry, um, my own observation because I left that that workplace prior to the pandemic, but I still had people that I knew who worked there during the pandemic and the selling of wellness, let's say, does not align with actually caring if your employees are well. And that very much is the case in this book as well. So I think it was really, really well done. It made me wonder if the author did at one point work in a place like this, because there was there were some hard truths, um, but it was really, really excellent. All right, so just wanted to do a really quick check-in for Venco by Sherry Demoline. I think I showed a little uh, clip where I was sitting and reading it with Loki in my lap and it's going really, really well. So I was able to get this from my local library and 
Um, so far, it's a book that is really about sort of the initiation of a witch. Um, there's a character, main character named Lucky St. James, who you're kind of following through the story, but she's in the process of finding out that she is a witch and that um, she is sort of destined to join this coven. And so it's right now I'm about almost, I'm about 60% through it. There are currently six people who are, are sort of being initiated and they need to find a seventh to complete the circle and complete the coven. And so you have this initiation of this brand new witch, Lucky, who's kind of just found out that she is a witch and doesn't really know what that means. And then you have the other coven members kind of coming together and they're going to take on this big bad character who's been introduced. I'm really liking this so far. This is the first book that I've read by Sherry Dimeline. I love a good witchy book, um, a, a book that kind of focuses on a coven or a group of witches like coming together and people being initiated into their magic. I think those are really fun themes. So I'm very much enjoying that. And this coven is pretty um, diverse and the characters are really interesting. You know, it's, it's a lot of characters. So you're kind of getting glimpses into their initiation into finding out that they're witches um, and what what sort of led to them finding that out. There is not a ton of development of like the magic itself. Like there are little sort of Easter eggs being laid and and it looks it seems like she did a lot of research on witchcraft in general. There are references to lots of different kinds of magic folk. Um, from within different cultures and so that's really interesting an interesting piece of things um, but in terms of like like if you're looking for a really fleshed out magic system I would say don't go to this book and I also would argue that this is not really a horror book at least at this point um, there are there's a big bad and there are some scary things that are happening definitely and there are some you know really horrifying things that did happen to people but in terms of like the actual tempo of the book and like the feeling of it going through it it's more of a character study um it's kind of slower paced and I would say that it reminds me a little bit of the book The Change um which I read last summer and I really enjoyed and it was very similar where like you there is a sense of building dread and there is anticipation about the bad things that could happen because of this bad character but it's really not horror in the sense that you're sitting there getting scared like in the moment while you're reading at least for myself so I think it's interesting that it was on this list of best horror books I sometimes I wonder if like witchy books just get thrown in there even when they aren't super scary sometimes so um that's my initial thoughts All right, just wanted to do a quick check-in. It's been a few days since I finished Venko by Sherry Dimeline, and I really, really enjoyed it. I thought this was a super solid book. Um, in the end, I would agree with my initial assessment that it is not a horror book. So I'm a little bit surprised that it ended up on that list. I think it's just because it's like a very witchy book that it probably ended up there but I would just throw that out there to anyone who goes to read it that it really wasn't like scary to me during uh the reading of it there are certainly you know there are dark things that happen there are dark aspects to the story and there is like a big bad but um it it basically follows a coven of witches and that's kind of you know what you get is like the coven being brought together and the individual people kind of like learning about each other and then um learning you know how to potentially overcome their own situations their own background and come into their magic essentially and that that's really what you get so I thought it was very strong and I definitely will read more from this author I've started another book from the list which already right out of the gate is definitely going to be horror and I actually had to put it down this weekend because I've been reading a lot of dark things for the booktube prize and so it was just a lot to read this kind of like eco horror dystopian story um 
at the same time as a, a book on refugees that's been really intense and a book on environmental catastrophe that's been uh, pretty intense too. So I was like, if if my nonfiction is going to be dark and heavy, I need my fiction to be a little lighter. So I took a break from horror reading. So this is The Marigold by Andrew F. Sullivan. This is a book that takes place in um, a version of Toronto, which is funny because Venko also starts out in Toronto and like the main character is from Toronto. So it's funny that Toronto is like popping up in my media lately for some reason. Um, and it's basically about <laughs> the tagline is it's about a novel about a city eating itself and there's a lot of like eco horror um kind of like a, a it's a probably near future world where things are literally rotting away in the city the city's like sinking into the water and there's a lot of like mass flooding going on and with that um comes some it seems like like fungus and sort of spore-like things that are taking over and one of the characters that we're following so far is a woman who works for like a government agency that's supposed to deal with these issues and dealing with it kind of means like sweeping it under the rug and pretending it's not happening so I think it's going to be some interesting commentary probably on global climate change and other lots of other issues that our government kind of does that with um but particularly on the the eco horror side I think it's going to have some commentary on climate change for sure so that should be interesting um and so far it's definitely very evocative and gross if you don't like like fungus horror or anything kind of like zombie like so far it feels kind of like the lead up into something like that so we'll see I don't want to like accidentally spoil it um for for anyone so I'm not going to go into super detail but so far so good definitely creepy and atmospheric and I will check in when I have another update hey just wanted to do a quick check-in for this vlog so here's the thing <laughs> it's been literally a week since I filmed my last check-in and I haven't made any progress or even wanted to pick up the marigold again um, and upon reflection, I realized it's because it actually really scared the shit out of me to the point where it like wasn't even fun to read. And I definitely got a little bit triggered by <laughs> the, the concept of this book. So, um, I think it might just be like other things that I'm reading right now, but also I will say that environmental horror really, really does scare the shit out of me because... I don't feel like it is at all far-fetched or um, like fantastical in any way and also like right in literally this week, this day, um, it's been another just awful week of Canadian wildfires and where I live in New Hampshire we've been getting a lot of the smoke from that um, and earlier this month you know the same thing obviously like these wildfires are awful for people that are living near them they've been getting worse like every year and um it's kind of terrifying and then on top of that like we live decently far away from where these wildfires are happening but we're seeing um lots of smoke like smoke to cover the sun kind of situation definitely unhealthy breathing levels for um, air particles and stuff and my some of my family works outside and um, has had to work in this and it's really fucking them up so it's kind of terrifying honestly um to be like living through that sort of dystopian hellscape example of environmental damage that humans have done and are continuing to do and also reading a book about that <laughs> So I'm not going to, I'm going to DNF this book is my point because it is like hor the kind of horror that right now is not fun for me. Um, and I think this is almost like an idea for a video concept in and of itself, or at least a discussion that I'm interested in having with other people on booktube, which is like, do you read horror to be scared by realistic 
things uh, that you're actually scared about in real life? Or is it sort of like a release valve for fear about things that are not what is scary in real life for you? Um, or is there some other reason that you think you read it? I think that like personally I like horror for a lot of the commentary that it does that's something that I really look for in horror is like good commentary um accurate commentary and part of that can be that the scary thing is related to something really scary in life like real life um but I don't know I think that sometimes I like horror that explores like experiences that are different from my own or explores questions about identity definitely that's something that appeals to me and like clearly in this vlog I've read a book where the experience is somewhat similar or like commenting on something that I have experienced which is awful beauty standards um I would say Venko was less of a horror there was like a little bit of commentary especially about the way that women have been um, villainized as witches specifically or like historically and the violence that that causes still in our society but it was much less scary but this book the marigold just like it actually made me nauseous reading it I had like a physical Un unhappy reaction to it to the point where it's like this isn't even going to be fun commentary um because it's so realistic to me I guess in this moment so yeah it's got me thinking but I do have an update about a book that I started that I'm really um enjoying so far so yesterday I started listening to Bad Cree by Jessica Johns and this book I've heard is I've heard like mixed reviews of this book a lot of people that I've heard have said it wasn't scary to them now I always take that with a grain of salt a hundred percent of the time when it is a book that deals in some way with like racial identity because I think that um and I think that Jesse uh, from Jesse on booktube I'll try to link a video down below that they made about this but basically I think that um, we're white people myself included can be really racist in our interpretations of what is or is not scary um, and I'm sure that that extends to other identities as well like I've definitely I've experienced that as a woman with men telling me that something is not scary to them that I'm like holy shit that is fucking horrifying to me like I couldn't even tell you so um yeah so I think that that happens a lot so with this book my point is with Bad Cree I have heard from other reviewers that it isn't scary quote unquote so far it's already a little creepy to me it's definitely creepier than Venko was which I would say it was a book that was more um of a like comforting character study I guess this book is a character study too I think in some ways but there are very unnerving things that are happening to this main character Mackenzie so you're following this young woman she is Cree and she uh lives in Vancouver right now but she's moved to Vancouver within the last couple of years um because of apparently family stuff there's not a lot you don't know a lot as of yet I'm at 23% through the book right now and there hasn't been like a real reveal on what the family stuff exactly is but you do find out pretty early on that her sister passed away um a year almost a, exactly a year ago at the point when this book is happening a little bit less than a year ago and Mackenzie has been when this book starts she's been having these um, really disturbing, intense, and real, real uh, feeling dreams to the point of like, she's bringing things through her dreams into the real world. That's kind of where where the book starts. Um, and they are disturbing dreams, they're violent dreams. Um, she has had to start like, dressing as though she's going to be traveling into like a winter woods in her dreams, because that's where she's been 
traveling in her dreams. So that's happening. Um, she's kind of like freaking out about it as you would be <laughs> if this was happening to you. Um, and she has, at this point where I am in this story, she has kind of started to reach out to her family members to talk to them about these dreams and to see if there's any wisdom that they have or anything um, that they can offer to help her with this. And then you're starting to learn more about like her relationship with her extended family. There's a larger cast of um, family members and characters that we're starting to meet. And it's it's really good so far. I'm really enjoying the audiobook a lot. Um, I think the narrator is really great. I cannot remember their name, so I will um, try to add that to my notes down below. But um, yeah, it's so far it's really, really, really good. I'm enjoying it very much. And I can tell I started this because I got it out of the library and I was like, I'm not going to decide on DNFing the Marigold until I start something else and see what's going on with my brain. Like, am I just not in the mood to keep reading horror right now? But no, uh, I'm definitely still in the mood <laughs> for horror. And I am really enjoying Bad Cree and I'm really enjoying like the family commentary element that's here about strange relationships, like difficult relationships with family and also like the, the importance of those relationships, but how people that are close to you, you can sort of, you know, let them down in a lot of ways, right? And they can let you down in different ways. And that can cause kind of a bit of a fraught relationship, especially when you're dealing with grief and things like that. So I think that um, it's really, really good so far. And it gave me permission, I guess, it, like having that experience has given me permission to say, I don't want to put myself through reading the Marigolds right now because it's too dark for my brain. So that's my update. All right, so I wanted to wrap up this vlog this morning. Um, it is July 5th and it's beautiful. It's actually beautiful outside today. Yesterday I finished Bad Cree by Jessica Johns and it was very good. I thought it was very solid, especially it is a debut novel. Um, it's short, it's a little bit less than 300 pages and I think that it was overall very well done. Um, I'm gonna say it's quite scary. So, you know, especially if you um, have like grief stuff in your past, any family, family stuff related to grief or loss of friends um, that have caused you grief, sadness or distance from people who are close to you i think that this story was pretty hard-hitting in a lot of ways and also had some really um some really solid commentary on grief and the ways i, I think i had said it before like the ways that you can kind of let people down sometimes um when you're dealing with those things and how you can also come together with family and, and deal with those things together. Um, but it takes work either way. So I think that there was some really good commentary in there on that. Um, in the second half of this book, Mackenzie ends up traveling home. So I kind of gave you the beginning of the plot where she is having these dreams, these really intense dreams where she's bringing things back through her dreams or she's bringing, she's, clearly like bringing herself into the dreams as well um because she's had to start dressing appropriately for the weather in the dreams and that continues um for you know quite a long time in the book it's, the dream element is a major part of the plot and you learn more about that and she ends up needing to go home to her family in Alberta so she's been living in Vancouver for a couple years and she has to go home to her family in Alberta. And there's um, a, a period of time there. I think that section was great because you got to learn more about her family and get to know these characters that you had kind of started to meet through phone conversations and things like that earlier on in the book. Um, but you actually get to meet them like in person. And I think that that was that was good. You needed that character development. I also felt like that was where the plot 
lagged the most. And I think it's because um, the some of the scarier stuff seemed to be sort of like put on hold a little bit during that period of time to further the character building that kind of need to happen there. So I would say like the pacing is like a little bit off, but nothing that's not um, something that could get better with practice <laughs> definitely and again this is like a first novel um and I thought that the wrap-up and the ending was really good and I would definitely read more by this author so overall a really good time um so the list so far the book riot list so far I've officially read four books that were on this list I started a fifth, but I DNF'd it. So out of five books that I tried on the list, four of them have been solid hits for me. Um, two were five-star reads. So that was Lone Women by Victor Laval, which I've talked about in other videos. Um, it's a, one of my favorites of the year so far. And then Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang was also um, a five-star read for me as well and extremely scary in my opinion. Uh, one of the scarier horror books that I've read this year for sure. Um, lots and lots of content warnings for that book as well. And then Venko by Sherry Dimeline um, was also very good. Um, very much like a character study witch kind of coven building story. And that one was like a, I think it's like a four star read for me. And then this book, uh, Bad Cree by Jessica Johns, I would say is also like a four star um, read for me as well. Very solid, very fun. And then the Marigold, I did end up DNFing, not because I thought it was bad at all. Um, it was just too scary for me to read. <laughs> right now in terms of like the subject matter so uh so far that's pretty solid hit rate um in terms of good books from this list so I do think I have a few more that are supposed to come in at the library I have a few more that I have access to so I think I am going to do it like at least a part two for this vlog project and talk about some more maybe like later on in the summer um so let me know if you've read any scary books lately if you've read anything on this list um and I hope you have a great rest of your day